Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Show. It's finally here, the big double game week that we've all been looking forward to. And you know what that means, don't you? The question is, is it time to use triple captain on this fella, Erling Haaland? Meanwhile, Mo Salah has timed his return perfectly for maximum FPL chaos. And we'll also be talking about Ivan Tony too, ahead of Brentford's tough double. Joining me to do all of that and more in the studio is Gianni Batice from Chasing Green Arrows. Gianni, thank you for being here. All set? I think so. Very excited. The fact we've got four teams playing twice, but two of those teams, Man City and Liverpool, we just see goals, goals, goals. Very good for FPL. Yeah, it certainly should be. Let's take a look at those fixtures then and get some confirmation of the double game week that's ahead in game week 25. It's Brentford and Liverpool who get us underway on Saturday. Manchester City take on Chelsea in the late kickoff then as well. Two matches on Sunday with Everton against Crystal Palace coming on Monday night. And then it's the turn of the doublers. City against Brentford on Tuesday and then game week 25 concludes on Wednesday with Liverpool hosting Luton. Your first reminder of the show then, the deadline this time around is on Saturday at 11 a.m. UK time. That's 90 minutes before Brentford against Liverpool. Do not, especially this week, forget to set your teams. OK, let's get things started then for the show. And our first focus is going to be on Manchester City ahead of their double game week. Only one place to start, and that is to have our focus firmly on Manchester City ahead of their double game week this week. We've got a guest to do that as well. We're joined by Holly Shand from Fancy Football Hub. Holly, thank you for joining us. We're going to talk a lot about Haaland and the triple captainship later on in the show. But let's focus at the moment on Phil Foden and Kevin De Bruyne. Do you think it's essential to own at least one of those this week? Yeah, I think we need to be doubled up on that City attack. Obviously, Haaland's going to be overwhelmingly popular, not just in the team, but as captain. So doubling up at least by having a De Bruyne or Foden is definitely going to give you a boost. I think if you're going anywhere, consider that triple up as well, because both of them are banging in form at the moment. They seem to be playing plenty of minutes and both capable of a big call this game week. Yeah, it's a mouth-watering prospect for FPL players, Johnny, because not only is there a good double game week, but unlike Liverpool, City don't blank in game week 26, so you yeah. can indulge as much as you want and not have to worry. Yeah, you really can. You can set them in your team for a good stretch. And it's two home games, the double game week, which we absolutely love for City. They're a different beast at home. Even in the corresponding away fixtures against Brentford and Chelsea, they clocked seven goals. Yeah. I mean, triple City attack <laughs> is looking very tasty this week. Yeah, and even looking ahead, obviously, game week 29, there's maybe a little bit of a question mark on that. But these next three look great. 27 and 28, we can worry about a little bit later, maybe, because they're two tough games, aren't they, possibly? Yeah, but even so, you know, Man City look like they'll score goals against anyone at the moment. They're averaging over two goals a game. And after that Bournemouth game, there is an FA Cup game against Luton, so some of the big names could be rested. I wouldn't be too worried about fixture congestion. When Pep's got his favourites and they're fit and they're playing well, they start every week. Haaland, Rodri... De Bruyne when fit, Foden at the moment, seems really reliable for minutes. Yeah, OK. Holly, a lot of players will, will own them already, but some people will be looking at it and thinking, right, do I want Phil Foden or do I want Kevin De Bruyne? It's a tough question, but if you had to pick, here's a comparison to help, who would you go for? I think I'd just go with Kevin De Bruyne because I just feel like he's got that higher ceiling. I've got bad memories of not having him in double game weeks where he's absolutely delivered a monster hole. So I think of the two, he's probably the one that I want the most. However, you've got to bear in mind the difference in price as well. So if you can only get to Foden, that's absolutely fine as well. I mean, looking at that, Jenny, it looks like Foden scores the goals and De Bruyne uh, supplies him in the last four game weeks. But you have to remember that all three of those goals came in the game week when he was on your bench. Yes, against Brentford <laughs> away. So I hope Sorry to bring it up again. It would definitely be my 11 this week, but Foden has become more of a goal threat. Like, there's no doubt about it. This is his best season, I think, in front of goal, and Pep's rewarding that with starts. He's got so many routes to the team, whether he's playing wide either side, or Pep has been quite vocal, as has Foden, about wanting to play more centrally, have more responsibility. And when he's in those central areas, he's a much greater goal threat. Julian Alvarez was rested for the FC Copenhagen game in the Champions League. Does that concern you at all in terms of the minutes for Foden and, and De Bruyne? I mean, when Haaland was out, when De Bruyne was out, Alvarez was absolutely set and forgetting that team. But now these guys are back, I think Alvarez is vulnerable. If I had him in my team, would I sell him? Probably not. But he's definitely not a buy this week, Alvarez, and he's definitely vulnerable. 
for one, if not two starts, I'd be surprised to see him start both. OK, that's the forwards and the midfielders then, Holly. What about the City defence? If you were looking to invest there, where would you go? Nathan Ake is the one to buy for me. He's actually City's highest scoring defender in the game this season. Got the most attacking threat and goal involvements. I'm just not that confident on clean sheets for City. They tend to concede a sloppy goal per game. Six clean sheets this season. Four of them have come at home. So Ake is an easier way to get to that triple up on City. So if that's the only way that you can get the triple up, then, then go for Ake. But if you can try and squeeze in the triple attack, I think that's probably going to be the one that yields the most points. OK. I mean, if you weren't going to get Aki in defence, is there anyone else or is it literally just Nathan Aki in your mind too? Yeah, I mean, even Ake, I'm not sure about. I just the City defenders don't come with upside anymore. You know, years gone by, we'd rely on a Cancelo for some goals and assists yeah. as well as the clean sheet points. There's not one City defender that really stands out in terms of great attacking threat. I'd rather just go to the Arsenal defence for a similar price point. I also look at Pep's rotation at the back. Yes, Ake should start both games, but if Akanji came in and played a game rogue left-back or Lewis came in, you just wouldn't be surprised. It is Guardiola after all, There's a lot it? of rotation in that back four. Yeah, there certainly is. Right, OK. Holly, thank you for the moment. We'll see you again in a little while. But we're going to take a closer look now at Liverpool, of course, another one of the sides who have a brilliant double against Brentford and Luton. <laughs> Yes, lots to discuss and debate regarding Liverpool ahead of their double game week and we needed a Liverpool expert, a Liverpool fan to join us. We've got Lee Bonfield from FPL Family. Lee, thank you for coming on. If it wasn't hard enough working out who to own from Liverpool for this game week, Mohamed Salah has really stirred the pot with his reappearance in training this week, hasn't he? Yeah, fantasy football has a way of doing this to us, doesn't it, Ian? You make your plans and then we get a, a Salah-shaped spanner in the works. But <laughs> I don't think it's going to change my plans too much, I have to say. I think Klopp and Liverpool and Salah himself, they've all got to be pretty careful with hamstrings. It's the sort of injury, look, I'm, I'm no doctor, but I know, and I've seen, we've seen before how <laughs> hamstring injuries can reoccur when players come back a bit too quickly. Liverpool up against some pretty physical sides, Luton in particular. So with the League Cup final on the horizon, I wouldn't be surprised to see... Mo get some minutes, maybe off the bench. Klopp likes the momentum, he likes the rhythm in the legs, uh, and you'll certainly want that for Mo ahead of the League Cup final. Uh, but, I, but I see off the bench, I see substitute appearances, so I'm not convinced he's going to get the starts. I think they're going to be careful with him. OK, yeah, it was, of course, earlier on in the week where we saw that sight of Mohamed Salah back in Liverpool training. As to how much of the training he was actually taking part in at that point, that was the question mark. I mean, people already own Darwin Nunez and Diogo Jota, or there might be players looking to invest in either of those two. Which way would you go with this Liverpool team? Yeah, I'd be very happy with Jota and Darwin Nunez. They're two players I own. I'm not looking to make that switch. I mean, in Salah's absence... Liverpool haven't been short of goal threat. No, not and at all. Jota and Darwin have stepped up, and I like the, I like the fixtures in the double. They're really high-ceiling returns for two mid-priced assets. Getting a salary in your team often requires surgery. Four-point hits, selling very good players. I'd be sceptical on that move this week. So if you didn't own Jota or Darwin, would that salary factor affect your thinking in buying either of those two yeah. assets this week? I'm not sure it would. I still think it would be a good short-term call to bring them in. We have to bear in mind Liverpool don't have a fixture in 26 though so there's a good chance if you buy a Jota or a Darwin it is really just for the double game week and then you might be looking to offload which I think is fine. OK Lee do you agree would, would, would Salah's reappearance put you off Jota or, or Darwin Nunez or Luis Diaz even in fact who we've not talked about? No, I don't think it would put me off them, Ian. I agree with Johnny. I think, uh, you know, listen, since Mo's been out, you're right, we've been scoring pretty freely, um, particularly Jota. You know, he's really stepped up in Mo's absence, isn't he? And I think uh, outside of Mo, he's probably the best finisher at the club. One blank in his last six, including that uh, pretty infamous 19-pointer that he got against Bournemouth a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, although I have to say, having said that, that uh, that Darwin hit in the woodwork four times against Chelsea also sticks in my mind. And I'm, I'm convinced that one day... Darwin is going to get a 25 to 30 pointer for us in FPL, but I couldn't tell you where that's going to come. So if you wanted the, the safer pick of the two, I think it's Diogo Jota. Probably go with the Portuguese. Yeah, OK. One day, Lee, is probably something <laughs> we've been saying since Nini has appeared in the Premier League. Let's take a look at the Liverpool fixtures then. A reminder that they do blank in game week 26. So there maybe Gianni needs to be 
a little bit of an awareness of that if you're looking at making moves by bringing Liverpool players in and going big on them this week? Yeah, I mean, if you're not looking to use a, a chip in game week 26, you're going to be faced with no Liverpool, no Spurs, no Chelsea, no Luton. That's four teams, popular FPL assets in that team. So which ones will you have to compromise on? I think many will be looking to sell Liverpool players. I mean, no doubt that game week 27 fixture is, is good against Forest. Is that a reason to keep them all? Maybe. Is that the week Darwin goes and gets 20 pointer off the back of us all selling him? <laughs> Maybe. But then it is Man City after that. And then 29 again, we don't know about because of the FA Cup. So I think Liverpool is a short term punt, a brilliant. It's a great double game week. But long term, I'm not so sure. OK, and if that wasn't enough of a dilemma for us ahead of this double, we've also got the issue now with Trent Alexander-Arnold as well, who sounds like he will be missing at least yeah. this double game week. If you are a Trent owner, yeah. do you just go to Virgil van Dijk and play it simple? What's your thinking? If you own Trent, you simply have to sell him now. Looking at those fixtures and the blanks coming up, you need to offload an expensive asset. Lots will look at Robertson and van Dijk in the same team. Others might want to go down to a 4 4 million defender, 4.5 defender, and boost the midfield and buy De Bruyne, for example. I do... I am, Bradley, somewhere at the back of my mind, looks like a high upside pick this week. He'll, he could come in and play right back in both games. But then I question, does Klopp play the youngster in both games or does Gomez come in and play one? Yeah. But Bradley would be the risk pick um, that could save you big money. OK, uh, Lee, obviously, you know Liverpool well. When you're looking at the options from your team as replacements for Alexander-Arnold, is it there that you go? Or do you think we should be looking at other teams, maybe with future game weeks in mind, considering the blank is coming right up in 26 after this double? Yeah, I think you can go either way, Ian. I think I saw Holly talking about Ake earlier. And I think if you've not got the City treble up yet, I think, uh, you know, Trent to Ake... Is already we've already seen that be a popular move this week, so I don't mind that at all. But if you did want to stick with Liverpool, um, I agree with John. I think Van Dijk is probably the safer bet, probably the player that I would back to get the two starts in the double game week. Obviously, carries a bit of set piece set piece threat. Uh, we know Burnley are weak from set pieces as well, so I don't mind that. But I think Robertson is a really fun pick for this double game week. Mm. I really do. He's only owned by three percent of FPL managers. Probably going to take his fair share of corners and maybe set pieces. No Trent around to take those. And I don't think Dominic Sabozai is going to be fit either, certainly for the first game. So just coming back from that shoulder injury, I have a little bit of doubt as to whether Klopp will risk him in both games. Again, physical teams that he's going to be coming up against, particularly ahead of that cup final. So it comes with a little bit of a health warning. But like I say, only owned by 3%. So if you go there and you get you know a clean sheet and an assist in a game from Robbo, you're talking about maybe an eight, nine, ten pointer. That is a brilliant differential for those that, uh, that those that are brave enough to do it. Yeah, Robertson was my differential pick on the Fantasy Podcast this week as well. Thank you for the moment, Lee. We'll be back to you in a bit as well. But we're going to take a quick break now in part two. We'll be discussing the other doublers. That's Brentford and Luton. And don't worry, we'll also be chatting about the triple captain chip too. See you soon. Yes, welcome back to the show. Double Game Week 25 is almost here, so here's another reminder for you then. The deadline is on Saturday at 11 a.m. UK time. That's 90 minutes before Brentford versus Liverpool. And talking of Brentford, they're one of four sides with a double this game week. So let's turn our attention to their main man, Ivan Tony. <laughs> Yeah, we've done Manchester City and Liverpool, but we mustn't forget, Gianni, there are two other sides doubling this week. They are Brentford and Luton. Ivan Tony is probably the standout option, I guess, from those two sides. Yeah. The fixtures are tough, though. What are you thinking? Yeah, they are, although Brentford do seem to be a team that are fairly fixture-proof. Will they win the games? Maybe not, but they're a team that cause big teams problems. They Tony does as well, to, They seem to yeah. score goals against these big teams, and, and Tony doesn't need many chances. He's such a clinical finisher and Brentford always produced big chances. They're a team that produced big chances en masse, in fact. And Tony, as I said, so efficient. So, yes, the fixtures are tough, but he is such a reliable asset. And since he's been back in the team, we've seen he's been scoring goals, getting assists. You use the word reliable there. That's mm. important as well because we can rely on Tony. We know this for definite, that he's got a fixture in game week 26 when a lot of teams blank. And there's a guaranteed game in game week 29, which, of course, clashes with the FA Cup, where we're going to see a lot of teams missing out in that game week. So there is reliability there for him. That's a big plus in his 
Yeah, this box, isn't it? Absolutely, and we've just spoken about players that maybe aren't completely guaranteed starters in double game weeks. A lot of defenders out there. We've spoken about Ake and uh, Robertson and Bradley. Well, Tony, we know, will be good for two starts. So yeah. you're going to get those 180 minutes. You should do. He's on penalties. I. I I like Tony as an option. There's a lot selling Watkins and Solanke this week. Mm. I'm not sure it's a move for me, but if you've got a luxury of a free transfer, could consider it. Yeah, he's going to help you in future game weeks. It's always a good reason to go for it. We need to talk about Alfie Doughty as well, because, yeah. again, he seems to be the standout option that people have gone to with Luton. He's about 8% owned now, I think, something yeah. like that. Again, the fixtures are tough, but he's another one who's shown he can return no matter whether they win, lose or, or concede goals. Yeah, he's got a double-double game week. So, again, in game week 28, we like that uh, coming up as well. Um, the assist threat there is so, so high. The crosses we see from Luton, they're a team that won across the ball. They've got Adebayo to hit, they've got Morris to hit, and Doughty is the big threat there. So, I think it was nine chances created last time out. Really unlucky not to register an assist, but he's had plenty of those this season. Low to mid price defender. Luton's probably standout asset. And when you look at Luton playing, he's often in the opposition area and the most advanced man on the pitch, the average yeah. heat map as a left wing back, he's so, so high. So maybe not clean sheets, but potential for attacking returns even against you know, pretty tough opposition in Manchester United and Liverpool. Yeah, he's the biggest creator in that team. Even as a wing back, he's the De Bruyne of Luton from a wide area. OK, fair enough there. Yeah. Another team to keep our eye on, maybe. But let's do a quick roundup then of some of the single game weekers. We mustn't forget them. Lots of talk of doublers this week. We've been doing it on the show, certainly around the community uh, as well. There's been lots of focus on the double game weekers, but there's lots of enticing single game weekers as well that we shouldn't forget. We're bringing back Lee and Holly as well to talk about this. Pedro Porro is the first one on the agenda, Johnny. Then um, maybe a bit of an injury doubt. Yeah. We've got Wolves at home. Keep or sell. I think he's still a keep knowing Spurs are out the FA Cup, so we know he'll play in 29. I still think he offers good upside when he's on the pitch. OK. Holly, quick one to you as well on Cole Palmer. Ten points for him last week with those two stoppage time assists against Crystal Palace. But he's got Manchester City away this week. Do you bench him? Do you sell him? What do you do with him? I think you keep him and start him. I mean, three double-digit holes in his last five, just one blank in there. And he scored a penalty, didn't he, in the reverse fixture against his old club. First trip back to the Etihad. He's going to be fired up for this one. I think, you know, you need to go into this one with your eyes wide open. <laughs> hmm. Bit of a spoiler alert for what's to come, but that's quite easy to say when you're a bench booster, Holly, <laughs> isn't it? Certainly. Uh, Lee, let's talk about... Uh, Bakayo Saka as well, 15 points for him, even more than Cole Palmer uh, in the last game week away at West Ham. If you don't own him, despite all the doublers and all that sort of stuff, should he be someone that you, you could still target this game week? Yeah, you should be targeting him. He in particular and Arsenal are in incredible form the last couple of game weeks, aren't they? Burnley do give up a lot of chances from his side. They're weak at set pieces. So, yeah, I can see... I can see a scenario where we get a Saka assist Gabriel goal this week against Burnley and, and I hope so as well because I've got them both in my team <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> manifestation right there Lee um, Talking of Arsenal defenders actually, obviously we saw Gabriel and Saliba both get the goals in the clean sheet against West yeah. Ham last week People will be looking at these two when they see that Trent Alexander-Arnold is yeah. injured which direction would you go with these? Yeah, if, you, if you've got a spare Arsenal slot and you're looking for a defender and you just own one, I would be strongly considering the other. They're the most reliable source of clean sheets. They're the best defence in the league at the moment. And both these centre-backs offer goal threat. Gabriel is the standout, but Saliba's still very good in the air in the opposition box. OK, Holly, Holly Watkins, question on him to you. Very popular asset. Obviously, a lot of players uh, will still own him. But could he be someone that's OK to sell if you want to go for the double game with strikers in Darwin Nunez or Ivan Tony? Yeah, I think he's going to have to be the cash cow to get those double game week assets in, but do have the plan to get him back in pretty soon because he's got that utility in game week 29 that we've got on our radar as well. Lee, final one on this section. Uh, Purvis Estupinian for Brighton. They're playing Sheffield United. Been a little bit of uncertainty about his place. Again, he's a, a, a player that people own as well. Do you think he's certain to start this game? Difficult one, isn't it? I think I think you start him if you've got him. Um, I've noticed he's been dropping back a little bit in recent weeks and not attacking with quite the intent that we've seen before. But a lot of that's to do with Jack Hinshelwood taking up those attacking spaces in which Estupinan likes to ride. But with Hinshelwood injured, 
I think his stupid hand will get forward more. So if you've got him in your team against Sheffield United, it's going to be hard to drop him or bench him. Yeah, it feels like a good fixture, that, doesn't it? Certainly. OK, that's those ones solved. The next bit, I always love this bit, we're going to take a look at our guest teams ahead of Game Week 25. <laughs> Team reveals time, and we're going to break with tradition once again for Holly Shan because Holly, last time you were on, you were playing your wild card. This time around, you're also going in a different direction, I think, to everyone else. There's going to be a lot of triple captainers on Erling Haaland this week, but this side, you are thinking of bench boosting. Are you definitely going for it? Yeah, absolutely. I committed to it last week by making sure that the fringe players in my squad would make my bench as good as possible for this week. So I've got the maximum 12 doublers. I'm really excited to see what it can achieve. I had 15 doublers uh, once and got 184 points. So I'd love to get anywhere close to that. Yeah, I'm just looking at your team. Barkley in midfield, Regulon in defence as well. Are they the ones that you've got real faith in that can return? Because I can see, obviously, you've got Richarlison and Gabrielle on the bench who you could easily start. Yeah, I mean, with the bench boost active, it doesn't really matter too much. It just looks more aesthetically pleasing when you've got all the <laughs> doublers out on the pitch. Yeah, no, I totally get that. Right, OK, very interesting. We'll see how that gets on against triple captain as uh, with Haaland. I'm guessing you're a triple captain, Gianni, but let's see your team and exactly how you're set up. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my... Gianni, it is Gianni's team, right? Let's have a look at Gianni's team. Yeah. Super, right. Sorry about that. Um, I'm getting all flustered with talk of bench boosting and triple captaining. <laughs> What's your dilemma, Jani? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it seems like a pretty simple roller transfer this week. I've got a bit of a benching headache. We've spoken just about Estupanan and, and Porro and, and does Bell come in? As Holly said, having the doublers in your 11 is aesthetically pleasing. I'm not bench boosting this week, so I could be benching a doubler, but I don't expect much from Bell with two tough fixtures. Triple captain Harlan for me, though. OK, Lee? Last but not least, let's take a look at your side as well. What are your dilemmas ahead of game week 25? Yeah, re really jealous of Holly's 15 double game week. Absolutely, but I, I think by I've got the, the main bases covered. <laughs> we've, we've, yeah, we've talked about triple Man City attack. That's in play. Um, got to think about whether I bench Porro or Estupinan. That's probably the big dilemma for me. And I'll be keeping a keen eye on Ange Postacoglu's press conference because if Porro's injury does affect his playing time over the weekend, then it could be a transfer out for him um, and bringing in someone like a Virgil van Dijk or Robertson, like we mentioned before. Yeah, OK, and going a bit more on that double uh, game week that's ahead. Basically, Holly's tempting you, Lee, isn't she, to be fair with what she's doing? OK, right, Absolutely. time to talk about one last question, and that is all around the captain's armband this week. <laughs> So I think we've established by looking at these three teams that everyone is going to captain Erling Haaland this week. The real question this time around, Gianni, is it triple captain? Yeah, I think it has to be. I mean, Man City with two home games seems too good an opportunity to turn down. You then add in the fact it's Chelsea and Brentford, two goals they've scored well against already this season. And of course, later in the season, yes, Man City might get a double game week, but it will be a tricky double, trickier double game week. And we'll have mm. the complication of, I think, even more fixture congestion. So we'll worry about minutes. But at the moment, if you're going Haaland this double, it feels fairly safe that you're going to get two starts against two good teams. Best player in the game. Yeah. Yeah, and City's form as well, if you needed any more yeah. enticement, has been pretty good as well. Holly, obviously, you're going against this potentially by playing your bench boost. So when are you looking at playing your triple captainship? We know there's a double for Bournemouth in game week 28. So is it Dominic Solanke or are you thinking something else? Yeah, he's an option that's on the table. I guess by that point, we'll know whether City are progressing to the FA Cup quarterfinals, which means more blanks and then more doubles later on in the season. So I'll probably make a decision down the line. I would quite like to use that triple captainship on Haaland at some point if there's going to be an opportunity. Yeah, and it's an opportunity, of course, to, to steal a march on a lot of people because he will be an extremely popular triple captain uh, player this week, Erling Haaland. Lee... Is there any case to go anywhere else this week than him? No, not for me, Ian. No, I'd, I'd like to say that I'd be brave. And, and I think even Sam, uh, the other half of FPL family, is considering going for Kevin De Bruyne. But listen, in game week one, if you'd have said to me later on in the season, Haaland will have you know a double game week with two home games. And not just that, two fixtures where, as Gianni quite rightly says, 
They've scored well against these teams before. These are teams that are not going to play low block either. I'd expect Chelsea to kind of come out. I'd expect kind of Brentford to come out as well. So, yeah, listen, it's it's a no-brainer for me. Really, it's triple captain Haaland. OK, Lee and Holly, thank you so much for being with us on the show. Good luck with that bench boost, Holly. Um, Janet, if I, if I had to push you yeah. and you weren't captain in Erling Haaland, maybe not triple captain, forget that for the mm. moment, if you were going elsewhere, where would you go? I think I'd still stick within that Man City fixture. I mean, yes, Jota and Darwin, there's definitely attraction there. I just worry about the 180 minutes and two starts. De Bruyne might not get that either, but he's at least the creator should Haaland score. So he covers you a little bit. I think I'd go De Bruyne. Yeah, they've got the strongest fixture, City, haven't they, really? It feels like. Yeah, I mean, Chelsea and Brentford are two good teams, as Lee's just said. I see goals there. And the way City are playing at the moment, they just look like they're going to score bundles of goals every single week, regardless of the opposition. OK, Jan, it's been brilliant to have you on. Thank you so much for being with us, as always. Remember the deadline, Saturday, 11am UK time, 90 minutes before Brentford take on Luton. Good luck, everyone. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye-bye.